Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to work on several different things. Containers, maybe some planting in the cut flower garden. We're going to move some pots around. We just have a very full day planned. I wanna start here in front of the barn with the four containers that we plant up every year. We've got some bright and beautiful things to use. Look at these flowers. Oh my goodness, <laughs> they're so pretty. I think this is the prettiest I have ever seen the Bidens look. I just, they look so gorgeous. This is the Goldilocks rocks right here. And I've had these and maybe it's just because I'm like starved to see that bright color, but they just look so beautiful. I love the flowers, how they're not like fully flat. They look a, like a semi-double almost. And then we've got the Supertunia persimmon, which is a new one. Uh, we planted this out in the big urns out in the South Garden, and I also planted it last year, and it just performed phenomenally well. And we are going to pair those two with the Superbina Peachy Keen, just to kind of bring a little bit of subtle, subtlety of color in there. But the thing I love about the Peachy Keen is that the new flowers that come out have the same color that's in the persimmon and then they kind of fade out to that peach color and I just think it's such a pretty blend. Now I've got boxwood spirals in here which I've had them in here for oh I don't know a couple seasons now and a couple of them are looking a little bit like they're struggling. I did some pruning on one and I'm, I'm almost considering lopping the top off but I just can't bring myself to do it yet. The two in the center look great. Probably shouldn't have parked right there but this is the one that's struggling and I'm wondering if it's just because like, I don't know, it gets more winter weather exposure. I mean, it's still alive. It is pushing new growth. Uh, it hasn't pushed near the amount of growth that these two have. But this section right here, you can see, like, this is why I'm, I considered lopping it off. Because a big section was dead right here. And if I come this way, I actually could prune more of this out. I just can't, I can't bring myself to do it. Um, so I don't know. I might just, you know, I'm going to add some Biotone fertilizer into this container and we'll just keep our eye on it. I mean, there's new growth coming out right in here. So it might fill back in. That's why I haven't lopped the top off yet. As opposed to these, oh my goodness, I need to do some pruning on these today before I plant up the containers. And honestly, we're getting to a point where these are getting so full in the containers. Like today I'll trim this up to where, you know, we'll be able to fit plenty of flowers in here. But, you know, if something does happen to this one and we need to remove it, or this one is looking a little bit like halfway between these and the one on the other end, I could use these two somewhere else, flanking another opening while we move the other one somewhere to recuperate. Um, so we can do something different in these containers. We might be getting to that, that point. This one you can see has a little bit of browning. We'll uh, trim that off. And then this one, so see, we've got a little bit of browning. Again, this one gets more exposure. It's got a little bit of brown right up in here, but not near the amount of, as that other one does. Oh my goodness. Boy, you can really see how emerald those look and how that one just does not look that way at all. I almost wonder if we should move them out now. If we should move those two boxwood spirals in the center. Okay, I gotta take a minute and think about this because I feel like if I go ahead and plant these up, that one, especially right now, when I'm looking at it compared to the others, it looks like it's not gonna thrive. Like it's not gonna look near like these other ones will. And right here, you kind of want everything to match a little bit. Oh boy. I know what Aaron's opinion is gonna be. Here's the conundrum. Okay. This one is looking very sad. Yes, it is. These two look very good. Uh -huh. That one looks mid middle of the road. Over here. What about this thing here? Well, that was just a tiny patch of brown that can be, there's new growth all around it. Okay. So here's my thought. What if we moved these two out uh -huh. and popped them in the greenhouse pots at the corner of each green, of the greenhouse uh -huh. and then moved the other ones somewhere else so that they could recuperate or find them a new home Yeah. so that we don't have two that are struggling all season? Yeah. I, I agree. You agree? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you should leave them by themselves. I don't think you should put annuals underneath them though. What about super bells? They both like dry feet. I did order super bells this year. I would, I would leave them. I, I think that you'll have better luck with evergreens in pots if you don't plant anything underneath. That's my, my personal opinion. Sticking to it. Okay, so I think while we're at it here, I might go ahead and spray paint these pots. <laughs> How are you gonna get these out though? We'll dig them out. <laughs> 
I don't know. My gut just says, you know what? Get these where they can thrive. Won't it just be okay. a big old block coming out? Well, don't you think it, the roots will be? Let's see. Let's try it. You gonna find yeah. Out? Okay, we're gonna try to slide these out. Let me show you the pots where they're gonna go. The big ones right here. So we today are gonna move all these little ones, get them out of here and possibly the, the tall one as well. So what we're gonna have to do is dig this out so that this is clear and then slide that out and repot it. Okay guys, you know what we have ahead of us here. So we're just gonna get after it and see, see how this goes. done the greenhouse area at least in the front is done I mean this whole thing ended up taking way more time than we thought because I didn't intend on moving the boxwood spirals out but I just I knew it was the right way to go with that one that was struggling so bad and I'm so glad we took the extra time to just swap some things around front of the greenhouse area you guys oh my gosh that needed to be done so badly you know, we got our perennial load in and then we just started you know, putting plants in here just because they were close to a hose and we were in a hurry. We're gonna be cleaning all of our other things out from this area and putting them over by the high tunnels. So this whole area will look really tidy and I just love it. It just feels like breathing space to me. It was getting to a point where it was kind of bogging me down. I don't know if you guys are like this, but like when the inside of my house gets too cluttered up, like I have to stop what I'm doing and pick some stuff up because I can't, I don't operate with a bunch of chaos around me or clutter around me. And I feel like even without the perennials, the you know cluster of pots that we had on either side of the greenhouse door we enjoyed that for a couple of seasons but i am just in that zone where i want to simplify areas and have things be a little bit more striking you know the things that i do put in uh, and i know that changes from year to year but it was just the year to clear this area out i'm gonna have to get something to open the doors but it is nice that i can open the doors all the way like as far as we want to which will help things in there tremendously. It'll help with airflow. Uh, but I love how these spirals look in these containers. And I don't think I'm gonna plant anything underneath them. I think I'm just gonna let them be very simple. Um, yeah, I just, oh, I just love them so much. And we were incredibly surprised by how much bigger the reservoir was inside these concrete pots. 
Um, in fact, I initially didn't put very much soil at the bottom of them when we transferred the boxwoods over and we had to lift them out and put more soil in because there was that much more reservoir. But I did add some Biotone starter fertilizer into that soil. We actually utilized a lot of the soil that came out of those pots. You know, we put it into a gorilla cart and then as we repotted all the boxwoods, we started using it because it was nice soil. It wasn't even taxed by any kind of roots. Uh, it was fresh last year, I think maybe, maybe for fall planting. I can't remember, but uh, it was really nice. So the struggling boxwood, I have it potted over here and I have a friend coming to get it. She likes to recuperate plants. So here it is, and honestly, it will probably be just fine so long as it gets, she's gonna come like this afternoon and plant it today. Um, and you know, if it gets a little bit of protection, a little bit more shade than that area gets, it will probably snap right out of it. And it will have its second life in a new garden. And then the third one ended up in the pot by the chicken coop right here. How perfect is that? You know, we had an Arborvita in here. I think it was an emerald green or something. I don't know, I had it in there forever uh, from the last house actually. And we just removed it last year because it had just, it was in the pot for too long and it was starting to look kind of sad. So it was kind of perfect to add this little evergreen interest right here. Look at the view. Oh, boxwood, Japanese maple, gorgeous Hartley area. Love it. And this one, you know, has that little spot. I'm gonna trim a little bit on these, but not too much. It got pretty warm today. I don't wanna hurt them and shock their little systems even more after being, you know, transplanted. But I think it's gonna really enjoy being protected right here and having the shade. It's on the north side of the chicken coop. And then these pots, you guys. Oh my goodness, they are so colorful. And I'm so thrilled to have a different look in these containers. So we went in with the purple fountain grass in the center and I kind of packed them out. I used three of each of the annuals we talked about earlier. So three of the persimmon, three of the Goldilocks rocks, and three of the peachy keen superbina. And it's just such a beautiful, like kind of tropical or sunrise kind of look. Oh, oh, they're just so pretty. Look at those. It is a little odd to see the barn without that vertical evergreen interest with the boxwoods missing, but you guys know how fast these purple fountain grass grow. I mean, they'll be up here before we know it. The pot's got a new do as well. A Little bit of spray paint goes a long way. We've used these pots for so long. I don't even know how many years. I, seven, maybe? I don't know. I'm gonna show you the spray paint I used. They started off tan and then we decided one year to paint them black, but this is what I use. All surface paint and primer in black. I don't know, does it say black satin? Satin's the finish. I could not be more happy with this area. Just cleaned it up so much. Now we've got just that little bit to move out. We just need to have a few minutes to do that. Paul brought over a scoop of gravel and we put it on top of an area that was really thin. It's just brucing up so nicely. I don't know why it is, but it makes me feel like I can be way more productive when things are tidied up like that. Um, which brings me to our next project. I am going to go out to the cut flower garden. We're gonna plant two flats of things. I've got them loaded up already. We've got a whole flat, 72 straw flower. There's uh, four different varieties. Let's go through those right here because it's nice and shaded. We've got raspberry rose, apricot peach, purple red, and vintage white. And then we've got Joey's lamb's tail, I don't know how to say the botanical name, and I might not plant those out there. I might plant these in a pot. We've got chocolate flowers that do smell like chocolate. They're awesome. And then we've got Sunball Crispedia, which is a wonderful cut flower. These are gonna go in the same row because they are both low water users. Got our drill with our two inch auger. We've got Biotone, so we're good to go. I'm just gonna head out there and we'll get this done and then I'll show you, show you. We'll take a little tour afterwards. I don't know if you guys can hear the lawnmower, but Aaron's mowing right now. It's such a nice day.
All right, guys, it is the next day for the first time, I think, ever. I completely forgot to finish the video and show you where things ended up. Uh, there was a lot going on. In fact, I will show you uh, what Paul and Bethany were doing right next to me. They were mulching the dahlia area and it looks so pretty. Uh, so we were just chatting and I just loaded my stuff up, went to the house. It wasn't until later that I thought, I don't think I ever finished. <laughs> so here we are. This is the perennial section of the cut flower garden. It looks actually prettier than yesterday because they mulched this area today. So the chocolate flowers, which are a zone four through nine, ended up right here, right next to there's campanulas. There are perennial campanula and delphiniums. Uh, and we will be filling out the rest of these rows. You know, I've got echinacea planted in here and sea holly. Uh, we've got black eyed Susan's yarrow, all of our strawberries with foxglove looking great and our wheat is looking great as well. Look at this. Look at how gorgeous this is. Oh, I am just thrilled. Now, clearly the wheat and the sweet peas in our perennial section, that's not where we're gonna plant these sorts of things next year because I do want to have three more rows. I think that's what we'll have room for, three more rows much like this in this space. So maybe like adding some peonies or something like that. I think that would be really fun but the rest are in the annual section it's the last section we have to mulch yet but look at this dahlia area you guys so the walking paths we do a chunkier lighter colored mulch and then in the growing areas we do land and sea and i am happy to report i'm kind of shading this area let me turn around happy to report that our dahlias are in fact coming back you see them all? They're just all popping up. I don't see them up everywhere, but I see them up in a lot of locations. So I'm gonna wait until they've got maybe like this much growth on them before I determine, you know, whether or not the other ones are going to pop through. I have 115 potted in the greenhouse right now. In fact, maybe we'll go up and take a look at those here when we're done, and they're huge. They're like, you know, a foot tall, some of them, some even taller than that. So we'll be able to, from this patch, replant um, dahlias that we potted up early. So anyway, I, I think it was a successful experiment. Yeah, look at those. There's a whole bunch right there. There's more coming up over here. Oh, probably hard to see. They're pretty little, but that's so exciting. Okay, then in our annual section, uh, that's where the Crespedia went. So right here in the front of the row, which I think I had it planted. It was either here or here last year. And I loved it because it dries yellow. The blooms dry yellow, same color as when they're blooming. So they just last through... I mean, they could be out here in the winter and look just beautiful. So we've got that, and then we've got the straw flowers. Went with 12 inch spacing with those, and they ended right here. So we have enough room for gomfrina, and I think that's gonna be perfect to have gomfrina, straw flowers, and crespedia all in the same row. They're all very low water users. So I think every other watering, or maybe even I can stretch it further once they're established, I can turn these valves off control the water so that this row gets far less water than some of our other rows. Okay, let's walk back toward the greenhouse. We'll take a look at the dahlias. Okay, in the greenhouse here, you can see the dahlias. So these were tubers that we dug out this last fall. I tagged several dahlias that I loved out in the dahlia patch uh, because I didn't know if mulching them would actually work. Uh, now that I do know that it, pr it works really well, I mean, maybe not 100%, but it, it works pretty well. Um, I probably won't be as concerned, but I thought I wanna save some of these tubers back so that I have some extra to replant that patch because it is fairly large, a large patch. So we had these to pot up early so that we could have some growing on to fill in blank spots should the experiment fail. So like this one here is a polka. We've got Sonic Bloom. There's Old Rose Mix. Some are just labeled like Yellow Dinner Plate without an actual variety. There's La Luna, Terracotta. Just a whole bunch right there. We've got a nice crop of them right back here. Don't they look awesome? I think they look so great. Also, a little update on my fig cuttings that I rooted. I've given one of them away so far, and these I'm gonna pot up and hope to get more fig production, but I'm very excited about that. Look at this dahlia right here. Ooh, some water. Got that one down there. And this is the last bunch that I potted up, so some of them are just starting to pop through the soil. I think I rooted around in there. There is one in there. Lots of good growth. Also, one last update. Geraniums starting to bloom. I gave all of the Maverick Coral and Scarlets to my mother-in-law. She's going to build her color theme around those this year. So that was roughly 50 of the geraniums. We're left with a lot here to utilize, and I really love the colors. We've got white. There's apple blossom. The bullseye salmon is about ready to pop. 
and I think this is going to be my favorite. We've got Maverick Pink right there, Apple Blossom, and Scarlet. There's our artichokes. Lots to do, lots to plant still. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next one.